Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me once again. I'm your boy, Dead on Dave, and welcome back to another Sunday edition of Daily Focus. And of course, you know what happens on Sunday. I answer viewer questions. Um, bear with me a little bit. I'm, I'm a little emotional over this Stuart Scott thing. I just watched this uh, ESPN little tribute to him, and try watching that without tearing up. You're a bad motherfucker if you can do that. My God, that is just gut-wrenching it's so sad and god damn man Stuart scott rest in peace man just fucking man that sucks and it's the voice of my childhood in a lot of ways i mean that's that was my dude but you know okay let's get to uh the fan question shall we oh, by the way i totally plan on watching the new japan pro wrestling uh pay-per-view from last night that i heard was Fucking amazing, by the way. Uh, everything I'm reading about it is just like, holy shit. But it should have been. Not only is it New Japan uh, Pro Wrestling, it, it was also their WrestleMania. So it, it should have been that good, and I'm glad that it was. I, I've heard some discouraging remarks about the commentating, funnily enough, that the American side of it with um, JR and Matt Stryker, uh, I can't wait to watch it. I can't find. I cannot get it I, over here in Germany. I have a hard time buying it, and um, I can't wait to see it. It looks interesting, and I uh, really want to watch it. I'm freaking amped up. So, let's go ahead and get to the questions, shall we? And uh, we'll start with uh, cookies and cream. Uh, he asked, or she? I'm not sure. What will happen when Mark Henry comes back from injury? Who should he face in his retirement match? It's a good question. Uh, Mark Henry has stated that he is still injured and he is working his way back. And as far as we know, he is coming back. And he probably be back. Uh, I don't see them rushing him back. There's no point in bringing him back before Mania. So I don't see that happening. As far as his retirement match, I'm not really sure it matters. I mean, I mean... The, might be kind of fucked up uh, to say, but I mean, I guess you could bring back somebody from his past, and I could say something funny like, "Oh, the hand, have his son the hand," uh, you know, something like that. But you know, I'm gonna say something. I think they need to pass the torch to a young black power powerhouse, and there's two guys that come to my mind uh, that make sense to me. Uh, one more than the other, and it might not be the, who you think. Biggie Langston, obviously. Biggie, excuse me, they dropped the Langston. Uh, that's one guy because they're they. It looks like they've already given up on this new day thing. I haven't seen them. It seems like in a couple of weeks. So I'm not sure if they've already given up with uh, with those guys yet again, or if that's going to happen in a little bit. But the other guy and the guy I think should be the one is Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil has everything you want. Yeah, he doesn't have all the charisma and maybe not the talking skills that you would you would want. But the dude has the look. He's athletic. He's unbelievably powerful. I like him. He, he works well in the ring. He's not a terrible worker either. I would love to see Henry come back and have a program with Titus. And maybe if if he's able to come back, it wouldn't be a bad WrestleMania match. Maybe even a pre-show match. Uh, you know, Mark deserves a retirement match at Mania. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Mark deserves that. I think he's had a Hall of Fame career. And you want to talk about company, man. Mark Henry could have left a million times over, and he never did. So, uh, And he's suffered through some terrible gimmicks over the years. They've done some just monstrous things to this guy. And he's always just saying, hey, yeah, whatever. Uh, but I would like that. I'd like to see him and Titus O'Neil have a angle and Titus end his career. That'd be It would be kind of understated. It would be under the radar, and it would be a cool little send-off. I think Mark Henry deserves that type of match. Now, I'm sure there might be some other guys that would work as well, but Titus O'Neil, I, I think Titus. I, mainly because I want to see Titus get pushed. I like the guy a lot. Bear Bear, yeah, Bear Bear uh, writes, Since the Royal Rumble is coming, what is your favorite Royal Rumble victory? Pretty easy. It's two, and I put them together because they're back-to-back. -back. Both Shawn Michaels, 
uh, victories back to back to 96, 97. Or it was 95, 96. 96, 97. 96, 97. 95, 96, excuse me. Or it was, yeah. No. 94, 95? Fuck. 94, 90, was it 94, 95? I think it was 94, 95. Regardless, uh, is those two matches, uh, those are my favorite Royal Rumble victories. The, the Davy Boy Smith, yeah, it was 94, 95. Uh, the first one where he knocks off Davy Boy Smith, of course, the, the Shawn Michaels rule, Royal Rumble, uh, kind of changed Royal Rumbles. That, that was one that really changed things as far as what we expect to see out of a rumble. And then the next one where he goes, uh, he comes in the middle of the rumble and kind of coming back from injury, and he wins the damn thing by eliminating Big Daddy Cool Diesel with a super kick. I thought it was such a badass thing. And I remember the celebration afterwards where he basically almost gets naked in the friggin' ring. And uh, Diesel comes back in. I, I remember Kevin Nash walking to the back, and um, Michael Hayes tries to get a word with him. And it was the first time I ever heard Kevin Nash say, "The only way, the only reason you're living and breathing right now is because I'm allowing it." And I just, I, I love the line. I thought it was funny. You don't catch it very well uh, because it's, the camera's kind of moving, but you hear it. It's really funny. Then he comes back and gives Sean the, the high five. It was just cool. It was. It shouldn't come as a surprise. Shawn Michaels is my favorite wrestler of all time, and both of those rumbles were very entertaining. Um, I also enjoyed the Chris Benoit rumble uh, because I, you know, I, I I knew Chris a little bit, not very well, but I mean, I had dinner with a couple dinner with him a couple times um, back in WCW days. Uh, I lived in Las Vegas. Nitro Grill was <laughs> in my mother's casino that she worked in, Excalibur. The Nitro Grill was there, and he was there quite often. He'd always go down to my mom's. Uh, coffee shop Sherwood Forest and every time we did him DDP Chris Jericho a bunch of guys they would always come down and always sit at my mom's wherever my mom was working they'd always sit there and my mom would call me and I'd come down and we'd eat it was great it was cool so for me that was a fun one even though we're not supposed to talk about Chris Benoit things but that was a fun one too uh, okay what's the next question I want to talk uh, we'll go with what's his name? I can't fucking read. Nooney Robertson, Robinson, excuse me, Nooney Robinson. Do you think that John Cena will pass Ric Flair and go down as the greatest champion of all time? Ooh, uh, well, here's the thing. I think the argument can be made that maybe John Cena is already the greatest champion of all time. I, I think the argument can be made that he's certainly the greatest WWE champion of all time. But some people might, and I'm one of them, that'll say, no, that's bullshit because of the era in which he performed. That's really not his fault. His age is not his fucking fault. Uh, but he's been the guy for a very long time. In fact, one of the longest stretches in history. Stone Cold didn't have a run this long. Rock didn't have a run this long. Shawn Michaels certainly didn't have a run this long. Hart didn't have a run this long. Uh, Ric Flair did, but in different companies. You know, three different companies, as a matter of fact. Uh, and just because Ric Flair has the most title reigns, does that mean Ric Flair, is, if it's not Cena, is Ric Flair the greatest champion of all time? I'm not necessarily sold on that. I love Ric Flair. He's my second all-time favorite wrestler, and he was number one for me until he fucked his legacy up by all this stupid hanging on forever and continuing to fight when he certainly shouldn't have. Uh, it ruined it for me. It really did. And it dropped him below Sean. Yeah, I respect Sean for not coming back. Yeah, it's good for you. If I had to pick the greatest champion of all time, it's kind of hard to go against a guy like Bruno San Martino. You know, I mean, it's really hard. Hulk Hogan, it's hard to go against as far as greatest champion of all time. I mean, his... His name is kind of synonymous with it. He was a great champion. Was he a good wrestler? No, Hulk Hogan. I'm not going Bruno, of course, but Hulk Hogan. Was he a great wrestler? No, but he was a fantastic fucking champion. He bridged gaps. Uh, he put people over eh, not too often, but when he really, really had to. Um, <laughs> he would never lose clean, but 
it just kind of was who he was. He, he he was Cena before Cena was Cena. Yeah, there's no question that he parallels that. Uh, but I think, yes, I do think John Cena will eventually pass Ric Flair for title reigns. Uh, because it's kind of hard for me to believe that Cena is not going to win the title again to tie him. And if, they, if he ties him, he's certainly going to pass him. In fact, I believe he's going to tie him at the Rumble. Uh, I think he's going to win the match against Brock Lesnar and immediately drop it to Seth Rollins. That's what I think is going to happen. So I think he will pass Ric Flair in three weeks. We'll see what happens. Uh, but good question. I like that one. Logan Barrett. He had a good question last week. I think he even got a better question this week. Uh, who is the most overrated superstar in WWE history? Underrated. So he wants both answered. Two-part question. I usually don't answer these, but I'll make an exception for the bad news one, Mr. Logan Barrett. Okay. Most overrated superstar in WWE history. I'm about to get hated on so fucking much. It's not even funny. I think there's two. I think there's two. Uh, one more than the other. I'm going to go with the, the less hatred version first, and I'm going to go with Rey Mysterio. Um, Rey is so overrated, it's not funny. I, I, my God. Rey was pushed to the moon, and... You know, you can love who you want to love. That's great. But I never felt anything Rey Mysterio did outside of the cruiserweight division, outside of the, the, the small guy stuff, was ever believable. I mean, I could never have him in my head beating a guy like Kurt Angle or Triple H or The Rock or Stone Cold or any of these guys. Could never see it. It would never happen in my eyes. I just, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm... Oh, I'm too into now. I'm too into real. It's wrestling, Dave. Fuck all that. It, it, Rey Mysterio, his move set was, especially after the knee injuries, which happened quite early in his career. If you remember, in his WCW days, hell, he didn't get out of his first three years in WCW without having two or three major knee injuries. He slowed down really quickly, and it, it wasn't too noticeable when he first came to WWE, but I think it quickly became noticeable where his matches were very uh, consistently similar. I mean, very, very similar. You know what you're going to get out of a Rey Mysterio match. My God, the guy never reinvented himself, ever. I mean, he basically, he had the small, he took off the mask for a while and wore the horns in the LWO or whatever, I, I think. I don't even remember all that stupid shit. He was running with Conan and he had the horns on. Who gives a flying fuck? Uh, but he never, he didn't evolve. You know, guys from WCW who came over, they found they had to evolve. Chris Jericho is a very good example of that. Uh, Mysterio didn't, yet because he was basically WWE's only real true high fly flyer and Mexican superstar, he got a pass. He didn't have to. They just wanted him to be Ray. Wear the mask. Put a mask on a kid. Headbutt the kid. Fucking get into the ring. Do your stupid thing. West Coast pop. Three, uh, uh, 619. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. And I just I got so tired of it. The one interesting thing that I felt he did in WWE was his feud with Eddie Guerrero. Fantastic series of matches. And it had nothing to do with him. It was just because Eddie was so fucking good. Uh, so, Rey Mysterio, most overrated. I think, but the other guy in this one, I don't even want to say, but it's just what I believe. Before I say his name, I want to make something clear. I think he's one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I think he's fantastic. I, I, I have the utmost respect for his ability. I have the utmost respect for everything that he did. I just found his matches fucking boring as goddamn dishwater. My God. They were just stagnantly boring. They were always the same. And the one stretch in which he did something different in his entire career, he fucking ha hates with a passion and has no problem telling it. And, of course, I'm talking about Bret Hart. I like Bret Hart, kind of, in some ways. In some ways, I can't stand him. But in some ways, I really do. I, I, and regardless if I like him or not, I do respect him. But all this talk about Bret Hart, Bret 
the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Yeah, that's his mantra. He, he believes he's the excellence of execution, and he was. He would make sure. I was having a great conversation with Tommy C. about this earlier. The way that he would do things, regardless they were boring or not, I would still watch because, man, just, just admire how good he made everything look. And he did. There's no question about that. But all of this fucking hero worship about Brett is just, oh, my God. Brett had a lot of faults, and he paid for a lot of them. Uh, Brett doesn't know best, you know. Uh, you know, you damn Americans always talk about us. Yeah, I am the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. No, Brett, you're not. You're not. You're not any of those three. But uh, I put Brett probably in top ten territory. He is not the greatest wrestler to ever live. He's not. He's simply not. He's not even the greatest technical wrestler to ever live. I'm, I, I put Owen above Brett as far as technical wrestling. Let the fucking hate train come. But Owen had a more, maybe, okay. Owen had a more diverse style. He did more things than Brett. He was more unpredictable. He had a little bit more charisma than Brett. Uh, maybe not as good of an overall talker. But his matches were never boring. Never, never, never boring. They were, I mean, God, fucking Bret Hart. I could tell you every goddamn match he's ever had. You know, he, you know Russian legs. And then he comes off the fucking top or the middle rope with the stupid fucking little poncy elbow of his. And oh my God. Same fucking thing. All the goddamn time. Bret, Bret, Bret. Oh, bleh. Most overrated wrestler of all time. Even more so than Rey Mysterio. So Bret Hart is the answer. But Rey Mysterio is right there underrated most underrated wrestler of all time is kurt henning and i don't even think there's a close second uh, kurt henning may possibly be the greatest performer outside of Shawn michaels rick flair that we've ever seen uh and he never gets any credit for it people people the dvds and stuff talk about his athletic ability and all that good stuff and that's fine and dandy but this man has never truly gotten the full credit that he deserves just never I mean, he was so good. He was so ahead of his time. He was a big guy, bigger than people realize, really, who could move. He was a crossover man. He did great commentary. He worked with everybody uh, in the in the announce booth. He was manager. You know, he worked with Bobby Heenan and worked with Ric Flair. He put over people. His even his WCW days weren't completely horrendous. He did things that mattered. The four horsemen angle. There are so many things that he did that were just awesome. And he started with a good group of guys. They're very good friends with Scott Hall and everything. Uh, came up together there. I love Kurt Henning. I think he's fantastic. He does not get anywhere near the amount of credit that he deserves. And he is easily the most underrated wrestler in the history of the sport. I think I missed at least one question here. Okay, let me see. What is your uh, favorite overall tag team? Well, I did do a video this week on the greatest tag team of all time, which I put number one was the Dudleys, which is completely fine. Uh, they're not my favorite tag team. I do believe they are the greatest tag team of all time, but they're not my favorite. My favorite is the Road Warriors, who I put number two. Uh, and maybe the Rockers are in there, too. I really enjoyed the Rockers, even to this day. Shawn Michaels, I am a Mark, whatever. Uh I, I have to go through LOD, man. Legion of Doom, Road Warriors. Chicago, you know, they're my boys there. And great fucking guys uh, as far as in the ring. They were intense, fun, charismatic. Uh, they just looked like fucking ass kickers. And I appreciate it. Probably why I like the Ascension, Ascension so much, too. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's it, LOD. I, I think there's a couple other tag teams in there. I, I put the New Age Outlaws. In that category, uh, the Hardys, I really marked out for the Hardys uh, quite a bit. The Nasty Boys were one of my uh, favorites. And Public Enemy was right there, too. I enjoyed them. Uh, there are a few others, but, I mean, overall, I think it would have to be LOD. It's kind of hard to not go to Steiners. They're, they're up there as well. I love the Steiners. But Legion of Doom. And uh, that was by uh, Abstract Muscle, by the way. That was my, my boy, Abstract Muscle. Good question, as always, my friend. 
Uh, let me see. Who did I tell you who? Yeah, Logan Barrett did the overrated, underrated. And finally, the simple superior. You get the final question this week, my friend. What is your all-time favorite match? I love this question. I absolutely love it. And a lot of people will cop out. And they'll say, oh, there's... How can I possibly pick one match? Oh, God, there's so many great matches. That's impossible to answer. It's not. It's not, at least not for me. I have a very easy answer. Um, I could go with one of the best wrestling matches of all time, you know, like uh, pick any number of Flair Steamboat matches or uh, Macho Man Steamboat. You know, there, there's a few others, but there's one match that I could watch, and it's a more modern-day match, really, that I can watch over and over. And yes, I'm going to go to him again. I don't give a fuck. You all can suck my dick. Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels yet again. Uh, Shawn Michaels versus Triple H 2002. His comeback match at SummerSlam. My all-time favorite match. That match was so unsanctioned. Completely emotion-driven. Never thought that he'd be able to, let alone come back after five years but also in the manner in which he came back or uh, was just incredible. Four years, five years, whatever it was. It, it actually was like four and a half years, but they always say five for some reason. I don't know. That's kind of weird. <laughs> it's very strange. The way he came back and all the stuff that he did after. His second run is arguably better than his first run, which is funny. But that match he had with Triple H, that, that series of matches was great. But that first one was so good. Uh, kissing the referee on the head, at Earl Hebner, I believe. Uh, kissing him after the match, red in the head. And then taking the sledgehammer to the back of the fucking neck. It was brutal. There are so many good spots. A lot of decent wrestling. And the fact that he won with like a roll-up, you know, or a sunset flip or something, yeah, I, I thought was great. Uh, it was kind of uh, cool. Or was it a... Man, was it... Wait. He won with... A... A roll through, and then he bridged it. Yeah, that was badass, man. It was just a really cool. Yeah, it was a bri he he uh, bridged the roll through, and that was cool. Just a great match, man. There's not much to say. Shawn Michaels bleeds like nobody else. At hundred, and so does Triple H. They both bleed and they both bled a lot in that match. I give them both credit. Triple H was at his best at this time. He really was. He was just at his prime. Um, he was. He was. Full on game mode there, game not gay, you fucking haters. <laughs> and it was great. It was fun to watch. It was entertaining, dramatic, emotional, uh, psychologically riveting. It was just a great match. Everything you want out of a wrestling match, you got, and everything out of you wanted, anything, everything you wanted out of sports entertainment, you also got. So Shawn Michaels, Triple H, comeback match. Street Fight Unsanctioned at uh, 2002 SummerSlam. That is my favorite match of all time. So, hey, make sure you guys continue to send questions down below. I will answer every single one that you guys send. Please do it in this video right below. Any question you have, I will answer them. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. We're about to hit 250 subs. Thank you for that. You guys are building this channel, and I am so fucking appreciative of it. Remember, when we get to 500, we will be doing a giveaway from all the unboxing videos. That's going to be great. I'm going to send a box of things that I've been putting aside from all my unboxings, and I'm going to send that to one lucky subscriber. So that's real awesome. I can't wait to do that. Thank you guys for all the support. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And make sure you check out all my other good friends, Joe Cronin at the Joe Cronin Show. I'm also all over that channel. Tommy C, I'm on his channel quite often too at Shot from the Point. They go live tonight, Shot from the Point Live, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you're checking that out, children. Uh, and uh, Joe Cronin, he's putting out videos like a mofo, ain't he? Yeah, he's threatened by me. He, he knows I'm coming. 250. I'm coming, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, uh, exciting news. If you've stayed through the video this long, you're going to get a little bit of exciting news. I have about 100% have it locked up for my uh, for an upcoming Creator's Corner. Hopefully tonight I'll be filming 
with the one and only the great JD from New York. I mean, how awesome is that? Uh, one of the top wrestling and video game guys on the internet. I'm real excited about uh, doing that. That'll be a lot of fun. So make sure you guys check that out. And hopefully I'll be doing that interview tonight. So with any luck, that'll get done. Let me know uh, what else you guys want to see, what else you want to talk about. And other than that, I'm out of here. I will see you tomorrow right here on Daily Focus. Peace, bitches.